Let's talk a little New England preview. Now, if we're talking the spectrum of most exciting football games in the world, you got Kansas City Chiefs versus Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl at number 10, and you got Commanders, New England Patriots, week three preseason game. It's got to be number nine on the scale, right? Like it's right there. Like this is, this might be the most exciting, most thrilling thing you could possibly watch Joe Milton compete against Jeff Driscoll for four quarters. Um, So in terms of a Patriots scouting report, it's pretty simple. This is the most humble team in the NFL right now to put it nicely. This is, this is, this team sucks. This team stinks. This is a bad, and this is a Patriots fan you have talking here. This is a guy that I, the Patriots are my second team. I, whenever the Patriots are on, I root for them. Spent a lot of time in Boston. I really like the Pats. Man, it is rough there right now. You've got your sixth, fifth or sixth rounder in Milton outperforming Drake May in camp. You have no idea what's going on with Drake May. And then you've got Jacoby Brissett, who look, Good backup, good dude, not an NFL starter. We've established that. That's been established over the course of his in career. That last preseason game for sure. Yeah, tough situation there. You've got a new offensive coordinator there that you don't really know about. You've got a new head coach in Gerard Mayo that you don't really know about. Disaster. And they just traded away to the Atlanta Falcons. They just traded away Matthew Judon, who I might have made a phone call about, but... That's besides the point. They just lost the one thing that they had going for them on defense was that guy, Matthew Judon, the stud pass rusher, um, traded away to Atlanta for, I think it was like a third rounder. So not much to worry about in terms of skill positions. You figure if the DBs can't get it done against this group, woof, we should really be nervous. But I don't even know if our starting DBs are going to be playing. I mean, you figure a lot of starters are not going to play this game. These are uh, This is for the like 48 to 53 guys right you know this game is for the guys that are barely going to make their roster so i don't think you see Jaden daniels playing i don't know what combination of drake may or milton you're going to see or Brissett. Drake may had a decent um, game against the eagles i mean giving credit where credit is due he, 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 looked all right. he led, that, led them to two two scoring drives i mean it wasn't yeah didn't blow the doors off but but he looked okay I think he's a solid player, man. I think it's he's a developmental piece. That's what they're going for right now. And it seems like New England is just embracing the tank and getting ready to just rebuild and build the roster back up because it's in a rough spot. Um, Bill lost his fast. Joey Sly did kick there. two field goals in their last game. So we might shed a tear when we see Joey split the up the right, rights against our, our boys. You think Josh can just like bring them like a tray of wings with mumbo sauce and be like, Joey, listen, man. We're so lost without you, dude. Are you sure you don't want to come back? Like those awesome, winters man. up in New England are brutal, man. Those winters are tough. It's only an hour if you rented a condo. It's cool. It's only an hour flight. We could have you back here in no, uh, no issue. But yeah, it's a it's a tough situation there. But yeah, I mean, don't expect the starters to play much. Is there anything you're really looking out for here, Pop, against New England? It's rough. I mean, I guess you look at, you, you know, you watch backups play. I mean, it's interesting what, you know, our philosophy has been. You see the defensive line, most of our defensive line haven't played. Makes perfect yeah. sense to me that, you know, you got, got John Allen, who's a vet, you know, and, and some of the other guys like Armstrong and what have you. I mean, I just, I, I think it makes perfect sense. That they're not playing. You're not going to see Bobby sure. Wagner again. Not going to see Jaden Daniels. I mean, I think we're pretty well set. That wouldn't make any sense for Jaden. To play, I think he's in a T-shirt for that game. So, yeah, I mean, I guess you could, you know, Driscoll's done, shown pretty well for himself. Um, yeah. At the quarterback you know, situation in general, I don't know whether, um, you know, Sam is going to be well enough to play or they just bury him on the – maybe he goes on the uh, injury, injury uh, list and gets a roster spot that way. But, yeah, it's hard – to get excited. I don't know. You know, I don't know if there's any, yeah, I think we're not going to go through, we're going to go through a couple of position groups, but I think if we went through all the position groups, I'm not sure how many spots are really open at this point. Yeah. I think we're probably down to a couple yeah. real question marks at this point. Yeah. yeah. And I think we'll maybe do a more in-depth pot on that as we get to we got uh, some cut time. Day. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, cause there's going to be, I mean, after this preseason game, we've got some downtime before. So that's when we'll get into like our more national predictions and roster projections and that kind of stuff. Um, do the schedule recap one more time for fun. Um, but yeah, I, I say we move on in terms of the preseason stuff. There's not, not much to talk about there. Like you said, there's maybe only a couple open spots and we'll, we can evaluate that when we get into roster discussion, uh, later. Later I mean, I, year, I think yeah. this, this 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 Pats game is just indicative of the the, pay, the preseason is just painful in a, in many ways. Right? Oh. I mean, it's been really cool to see three drives of Jaden Daniels, no question about sure. it. Right, that's been worth the price of admission. But the rest of it, it's just it's it it's it's hard to watch. Honestly, um, it's cool yep. for those depth guys on the roster to get their opportunity to flash, but. It's it's tough, um, yeah. So uh, over or under. Sorry for the lack of hype about this Pats game, but yeah. I think it's really just a matter of getting past the game, and and then you know I think some of our next couple of topics will be pretty interesting to get into when we look at you know wide receiver who we expect to make the team at wide receiver, which is going to be surprising when we when we run through the numbers, and then that that secondary what that looks like I think is. Uh, is, is probably going to be more interesting as we start to really get into because I think what becomes interesting after the Pats game is then we're going to have cuts, right? Yep. That's the next big milestone is seeing who makes this team, who lands on the practice squad. You know, what are we looking at there? Which, like you said, we'll get into – we'll do post-game Pats, which probably will take five minutes, hopefully. Not not uh, not much more to, to talk to than that, hopefully, you know, that it's not uneventful. But we'll get into yep. yeah we'll get into what that roster might look like on the next pod. I think that'd be a great topic to talk about. Sure, over under twenty eight and a half minutes watched of the preseason game. I'll probably watch the that? whole thing unless I got nothing better to do. It's a sicko, man. This guy's an absolute. I'll watch sicko. the whole thing. What else I got to do? <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna have to see how it fits into the schedule. I I might make an appearance. I don't know about 28 and a half minutes. I don't think I got that in me, but we'll see. But uh, let's get into this wide receiver situation. We've we've teased it enough. Right. We've talked about it, right? It's time to talk wide receiver. What's going on there, man? Because I think it's pretty clear at this point when you do the math, you know, you heard. Yeah, let's run through it. Run through it yeah. real quick. Who we think is going to, who we think the six are, right? I th- I think we've got Terry, obviously. So the locks for sure, Terry, Diami at this point, Jahan, uh, OZ, Zacchaeus, McCaffrey, and then Jameson Crowder is going to be a lock because he's your punt returner, right? Dan you so said as much. Yeah. So you've got six there. That's a guarantee. And I think past just Jameson Crowder being your punt returner, I think he can help you out in the slot if you need him. Um, oh, yeah. I think he's a pro. Yeah. So... That's your six. You've heard rumblings of Mitchell Tinsley and Bryson Tremaine and the one, uh, the undrafted kid from Georgia, the tall guy. Look, practice squad, maybe if they keep seven receivers, one of them makes it, but you just don't see those six, I think, are going to be the guys there, right? But what's more interesting is what's going on with the order? Who's playing where? Who do we think is going to lead in terms of targets after Terry, of course? Who do we think is going to take on that number two role after Terry? What's happening there? Because you have Terry McLaurin, and then you have a bunch of dudes that are kind of all good at almost the same thing and kind of all kind of fighting for for who's going to break out of that pack. I got my prediction. I don't know what yours is, Pop. Yeah, so I think the question there is like who gets who after Terry, who gets the most targets this season, right? That's the interesting question. And I still think at the end of the day it's Jahan, right? I think that, you know, I saw a quote from Cliff Kingsbury. I think it was one of the last press conferences he does he did, and he really talked very glowingly about Jahan. Dan Quinn on the last press conference kind of backpedaled a little bit and said, Hey, I didn't mean this to turn into, you know, a negative uh, commentary about Jahan, right? It's just that we're we're competing at every position and all of that. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I think it's still going to be Jahan. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet on Jahan being the guy that ends up being number two. But 
I don't know that we've got a true number two. I think it's going to get spread around. I think Tiami's going to get his. I think Zacchaeus does some really nice things in the slot. Um, I don't really expect too much out of McCaffrey or Crowdy other than maybe coming in as backups if necessary. Yep. Um, you know, I know like depth chart wise, I'll just throw in this one. Doesn't really ask answer your question, but I know Casimir Allen's a guy that is an example of somebody that, that was – they're very interested in his talent. His speed is electrifying, but he can't catch the ball and he doesn't seem to be able to hold on to it as a runner. And yeah. so he's a guy that I don't think, you know, makes the final roster. He's going to, you know, they, they, they tried to work him in at running back a little bit. I mean, I just don't see it. I don't see that working, but um, yeah, I, I'm going to stick with Jahan. I think Jahan's going to end up being, you know, he had a horrible year last year and had 50 catches. 50 catch, fifty catches is probably number two on this team. And I think that Kingsbury can can unlock him much better than what we were able to do last year, both at quarterback and coaching, quite frankly. I mean, if Kingsbury and, you know, he's got he seems to have a tight relationship uh, with Jaden as well. So I'm sure Jaden's gonna want to try to get him involved. So I'm gonna stick with Jahan there. Yeah. Um I really hope 50 catches is not second on this team because that's that's about three catches a game. So I, I hope if John is the guy, he's catching a little bit more than 50 balls. But I, I think personally, I, I got the Ami at this point. I think it's going to feed the hot hand. I think you got to go with the fact that, look, Rivera, like Rivera was known for playing his guys longer. I mean, look at what happened with William Jackson is playing his guys longer. Cause he went out on a limb to get those guys. He spent first round capital on Jahan. Jahan was getting the opportunity ahead of Diami. Jahan did not look good last year has had a up and down training camp slash preseason at best. Diami is hot is solid. If you, you know, JP and other reporters keep saying this, it's just the general consensus. If you, we're Dan Quinn right now. And you basically got dropped on this team with no prior knowledge of what, of course he's seen the tape. Of course he believes in, you know, the scouting that's happened before him and whatever. And, you know, he has his own evaluations, but if you're evaluating things as of everybody's equal today, which is what it should be, because you didn't spend any of those draft picks and it shouldn't matter where a guy's drafted, who's playing the best. And at this point, Diami is clearly the number two wide receiver on this team. And then you wonder, I think the, the battle for me is going to be Jahan Zacchaeus, who's getting that slot work at number three. But I think Diami is more of a true flanker on the outside. I think Jahan can do well on the outside, and that gives you some optionality in terms of moving guys around and creating mismatches and stuff like that. But I worry about, particularly with Jahan's skill set, I worry about him getting off of the press. Um, and that's something that just we haven't seen progress on. And if you can't get off the press in the NFL, you certainly can't play on the outside. Maybe he can be used in the slot more where it's harder to press guys. Um, but I think Diami's going to be that number two guy. And I, I think he's going to have more than 50 catches this year for sure. I hope so. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting, right? You, you, you look at the flip flop there. I mean, Diami's a guy that many people were talking about. Does he even make the roster? I think we, I think we said that. He we was the butt he, of the joke. Hand up. He, he was, was the butt of the joke the for roster. years here. Yeah. All of a sudden, now it's great. I mean, it's great to see. I'm a big believer, right? We've talked about it. You know, I think that tryouts should be meaningful, whether it be yep. high school sports, college sports, pro sports. I mean, it's great the fact that we've started with a clean slate. It doesn't matter. Like you said, it doesn't matter where a guy was drafted. The guys that are playing the best get the opportunities. And I think that's terrific, right? And I think Jahan – Certainly from what we've seen, we've heard about in practice, not Jahan, Diami, sorry. Diami yeah. has really earned what he's got. Um, but I do think that Jahan, you know, you could you could argue that we reached again similar to Emmanuel Forbes, but he was a first round talent. He's a talented kid. He has a good skill set. Yeah, he's been in a little bit of a rut. Um, you know, I'd love to see I'd love to see Diami break out. That'd be awesome. Um, and I think you make, you make, you make some really good arguments. I, I'm not really going to counter them because I don't really have a strong counter to them. I feel like Jahan has a little bit more of that short game screen game. Maybe he picks up some, 
you know, some opportunities. We've seen him out of the backfield too. So maybe he picks up some opportunities that way. But then you could argue that he might lose some of that to Zacchaeus, who has a similar skill set. What yeah. Diami does in terms of getting downfield, he, he could be the best on the team, right? Terry's great at it, but Terry's really good at everything, right? Contested catches. But if yeah. you really, if you really just look at running that post play, Diami might be your best weapon on the team for that. And so, yeah, he's got a unique, a bit of a unique skill set for this team, right? Yeah. And so that, that does give him an advantage for sure. Now, I'm not saying, when I say Diami's going to be the wide receiver too, I'm not saying Diami's going to be better than Devonta Smith and T. Higgins not. and Jalen Waddell. And I don't think I don't think he's anywhere in that class. But I think for this team, unfortunately, and I think that is, I think the fact that Diami Brown is going to be your wide receiver too this year is a statement of the fact that wide receiver is a position of need going forward on this team for sure, well, if not now. But Look, I mean, you know, we're not going to have a Ron Rivera discussion because – this would be the longest pod in history if we did that. But yeah, I yeah. mean, there was a situation where Ron, you know, to quote JP Finley, was always trying to be the smartest guy in the room and pick these guys that you didn't expect them to pick and then convince you that they were the right pick. And, you know, I think Dotson and Forbes, who we're going to get into that position battle next, are a little bit of that. I think, you know, but I also think these guys are talented players. I mean, you take Deami Bound as an example. Here's a guy that was written off, but but here's a guy that had always had the potential and always had that talent. Maybe what he needed was a little better coaching. Yeah. And maybe that's what he's getting now, right? And, you know, credit to him for maybe a spark was lit, has a little bit of success. That success builds on each other. But, yeah, it's an interesting position. I, I think you're right. I mean, as much talk as there has been about wide receiver, it's pretty clear who those six guys are. If they go seven deep, I guess that'll be where the battle is. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, maybe they stash a couple of these guys on, on the practice squad. Um, we spent a lot of time on secondary earlier in the pod, but I would say that's the other position group that we have a lot of concerns about. Let's try to hit that pretty quick. Yeah. But, you know, I think for me, I'll, I'll start. I think, you know, you look at safety and you feel pretty decent about it, right? Of course. I mean, you got Quan Martin, Jeremy Chen, Derek Forrest, um, Percy Butler, Jeremy Reeves. You feel pretty decent. Now, Reeves has had a little bit of a tough preseason. Um, uh, but, you know, he's, he's, he's a proven vet. Maybe he's coming off that injury, struggling a bit. Um, but I feel pretty good about safety. I think the question really comes in the corner. Now, you talk about corners. You got St. Juice, you got Michael Davis, and you got Forbes and Sanistrill, of course. And sure. of those four guys, one you're pretty excited about. The other three you're kind of yeah, not sure. Just yeah. not sure is the best way. Could work out. Maybe it doesn't. And then after that, there's a huge drop-off. Like I, I, I couldn't even honestly talk to ca- how good a player Castro feels or – no, uh, no, I, I'll just call them, and, and, you know, uh, I don't even know how good a player these guys are. I don't have a read on them. So they're not NFL starters. They're barely NFL backups. I don't even know. Yeah, if they're are they NFL even, backups. yeah, are they backups. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't think we have an NFL starting outside cornerback. I think we will by default have a starter, but I don't think we have one. I, I wanted to kind of let you run that segment pop. I gave my thoughts on it. Earlier in the pod, if you guys are watching the Thursday edit, go back. But what's to your give, give us your episode, final thoughts? But, what's your general? I know you said you're hitting a panic button, but what's your like best case scenario, worst case scenario with the secondary? Like, what do you give me? Give me just some a little bit of juice before we end this thing. I mean, best 60 case, seconds on the clock. Best case scenario: Benjamin Juice Saint Juice returns. You were pretty to high form. on him earlier in the season. Early, in yeah, the, in the, I, I thought he yeah. could. I thought he could take a step forward. Best case scenario, he returns to form, which that form was being a top, you know, 15 to 20 cornerback in the NFL. Best case scenario, he gets back to that. I don't, I'm not betting on it. I, I'd say worst case scenario is, I think, pretty close to what we're living out, which is the outside cornerback situation is going to be an issue. We're going to need our pass rush. And that is the thing that I think we haven't seen yet because Payne and Allen aren't playing. But we're going to need that pass rush, man. 
Great we're going to need Dan Quinn to consistently bring in, be bringing the heat. We're going to have to, you know, win on the defensive line to make up for this because we cannot. These cornerbacks are rough, man. It's a tough situation. So we're going to need, you know, Armstrong and Farrell and Fowler and Payne and Allen and Luvu and Davis. We're going to need those guys to really put pressure on the quarterback and we're going to have to win. Like you can't and do maybe, much and, if you're and not maybe, winning in the trenches. Maybe we got a chance challenge Sanistro to be more than a slot quarter on this team, right? And maybe we'll he see. can do that. Maybe he can do that. Maybe yeah. he ends up being CB1, you know? And I think there is a tendency to overreact. It's not, look, it's not a good look that's both St. Juiced and Forbes got beat on fades with backup receivers in, in the two preseason games. It's not a good look. But that's one play each. So maybe we have, my only point would be, maybe we have a little tendency to overreact. When it comes to the quarters, that that would be my point and my hope that it's yeah. an overreaction. Uh, uh, otherwise, you're right; we're in trouble. We'll see. I mean, you do run pretty vanilla schemes in the preseason, and maybe there's more disguises and things that you can do in the secondary, and you can put these guys in positions where they're not in as many situations where they're weak in. But I just don't know where this group is strong in <laughs> in Sanders coverage right now. But you gotta yeah. hope you've added a superstar there. Yeah, but that's that's one guy. I mean, even if we get Mikey Island, right? Like. We there's still the other side of the field, and if the other yeah. side of the field is that bad, we'll, they'll still be okay. But it's going to be what it's going to be, man. We These coaches are known for coaching up corners, so they got a lot of work to do. They got a lot of work to do. If they can make this group serviceable, <laughs> I'll never question them. We're not worthy. Yeah, that yeah. would be godly. But uh, I say we wrap this thing up, Pop. What do you say? Yeah, I, I think right. we should. Yeah, well, without further ado... If you I'm made it this up. far, Dom owes you something to steal from J.P. Finley. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. Let's wrap this thing up. Without further ado, I've been Dom. This is Pop. Thanks for another great week, everybody.